Thanks for being here. Uh, I'm, I'm Dusty Damon. I'm a Lightning developer working on uh, splicing. Just wanted to shout out to T-Bass real quick for um, talking about splicing. And a lot, maybe, not everyone knows that his company made the Phoenix Wallet app, which is truly the best self-custody uh, Lightning app there is. And a big part of that is because of uh, the splicing work in it. So shout out to T-Bass. All right, I'm here to talk about splicing. I want to like, spend a little bit talking about the history of splicing. Um, so we got a little timeline here. Um, back in 2019, people were talking about splicing. It's a very old idea. It's one of those ideas that's been kind of around, and everyone thought, hey, that's a good idea. But no one did it for a long time. And we'll get into why. Um, and eventually, a proposal's made. So you notice it took two years from the idea being talked about to it actually being proposed up. It's because splicing is simple to say. What you're doing is you're changing the amount of funds in a lightning channel, but it ends up being complex to do. So um, this is a preview of that draft. The spec has a lot more stuff in it, but that's what the drafts look like in, in lightning. Everything usually starts out as a draft like this. And then I came in, and I was like, I'm going to do splicing. I thought this would be a great thing to do. I was uh, pretty new to lightning development at the time, and I had high hopes. Um, I thought, hey, I'll do this in like six months. You know, how hard, how hard could it be? We already had a spec, right? There's the spec. All I got to do is implement the spec, right? Anyway, six months became a year. <laughs> and then uh, eventually that became, I'll just get it done eventually. <laughs> Stop asking questions for how long. And I think splicing in many ways is a great like humbler of, 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 of people working on this stuff because it ends up being quite complex. But anyway, uh, I eventually got it merged in. I wrote the code, got it merged in. We had like a working splicing implementation, which was great. I felt very accomplished. And then, uh, yeah, there's my little celebration. This is the merge that I got. This is what a merge looks like if you're ever doing open source development. That little purple icon that says merge, that tiny thing up there, brings you the most joy of anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then shortly afterwards, Claire, who, who you just saw T-Bast up here, Claire's is his company, uh, they implemented it as well. So things started moving quickly at that point. And uh, th this is their release notes for when they released it. And then this is the key step in Lightning, is the way the Lightning spec works differently than, say, the Bitcoin Core spec does, where Bitcoin Core, they'll, they'll have a BIP before they write the code, and then they write the code. In Lightning, we kind of do it in reverse. We're like, all right, if you want your spec to be part of the Lightning spec, you have to build it first and then get it merged in. And one of the precursors to that is you must have two Lightning implementations that both support the feature. And so CL and Eclair got interoperability. And then, you know, it's going to get merged in the spec any day now. It's coming. It's coming. You know, hassle t -bass for, for and me for, and maybe LDK. I don't know. Get us all going. Anyway, this is very exciting. So this is kind of raises this question, like, is splicing done? Have we just finished it? Is it all done? And I think the answer is, uh, is kind of. Um, so right now, so we mentioned Declare has it, Core Lightning. LDK is working very hard on it. It sounds like they're very close. You know, I don't, I'm not over there, but the things I'm hearing are very good. L&D, we haven't heard anything from them about working on it. One day, I'm sure, they'll come around. Um, and an important thing about splicing is that it's, it's a two-party feature. So all the benefits of this magical splicing thing we're talking about require more nodes on the network to support it before it's usable. So if you have splicing on your node, but your channel peers don't, you can't really use splicing. So as we get more people implementing splicing and more nodes having it enabled, then we start seeing a lot of those, those uh, benefits. OK, so that's the history timeline. And we have 2020-something exciting things. You know, That's a precursor of what we're going to talk about here today. So um, what am I going to do now? Because splicing has been the thing I've been working on for years now. Like, that's a great question. Thank you for asking. Um, and that's what I want to talk about here today. Um, before I go on too far, uh, raise of hands here. Who knows what a lightning channel is? Oh, great, great. Uh, and who knows what a splice is? OK, like half as many? Great, OK. So. Um, 
You guys already know what a channel is. That's great. Uh, I'll, I'll say it just again in case for anyone in the recording or the audience that was too shy doesn't actually know. Uh, the lighting channel is, is it's like the nervous system of the lighting network. These are the things that payments go through. Uh, and all of the work as lighting developers is working on individual lighting channels, which translates to things on the whole network. These channels require maintenance. Um, <clears throat> that's a high-level summary. We'll move on from that. OK. So what splicing enables today is the ability to take a lightning channel and add funds to it from chain or take funds out of it. So what this means is if I have, like, say, if I have funds in my cold storage and I want to add them to an existing lightning channel, without splicing, you, you couldn't do that. So before splicing, you'd have to close the channel, open a new one, or some combination of these routines. Splicing lets us move funds into them. Um, it also allows us to move funds out of a channel. So let's say you, you're just a baller and you keep all of your Bitcoin in your Lightning channels, but you want to pay on-chain for something. You want to give somebody an on-chain payment. Splicing allows us to pay to an on-chain address from the Lightning channel. And this is all stuff that it does today. But it's kind of old news at this point, at least, at least for me, because we've been working on it for a long time. But uh, it, this is very exciting, but I'm here to talk about what we're going to do next. OK, back in the day, a little bit of like history, when Lightning was first coming out and it was all reckless and nothing worked properly and everyone was being very risky, there was this sort of dream that everyone kind of held for a moment in time, which is that Lightning nodes would just manage themselves. You would just turn it on, and it would create channels, close channels, move funds around, and you would automatically have some perfect balanced Lightning uh, node. And in practice, what happened is it didn't work at all. <laughs> Uh, none, none of them worked right. They, a lot of them would just open channels all the time, and you would just burn fees opening and closing channels. And everyone kind of like had a sort of collective hangover from the automatic node manager. Like, all right, that was a bad idea. That's, that's not going to work. Um, <clears throat> so the idea of this is, is just that you have an automated node, which I kind of covered here. So like one example that's worth mentioning here that I think is if we could solve this, this problem of automatic node management, you could have something like a deli shop person who wants to accept lighting payments but doesn't know how to manage a node, but they want to do it self-custodially. Right? So like right now, you can get a Square terminal, which is awesome. This, this week, I think they, they released this. You can receive lighting payments through Square, but that's a custodial service. If you wanted to receive Bitcoin directly through a lightning node and you didn't want to be technical about it for your deli shop in this example, there isn't really a way to do it. This solution, if it existed in a good form, would make that possible. So um, one of the, the kind of side quest goals I have is making these things viable options. So if, if, if I can build tools that make it easier for somebody to build one of these node managers, then we could start seeing more of them exist. And maybe one day we get to this sort of uh, um, high-end goal of the automatic uh, node manager which I think would, would be a great addition to, to the network. OK. Yeah, and so that's, I also want to kind of paint this picture that like, there are many things that are, going to be, that are going to be accomplished by my next project, but what I'm really building is the tools. Like I'm building the hammer and nails, the screw and the screw gun, and then other people hopefully you know, come and build, build these node managers. Um, could it be you, someone in this audience? Maybe you're interested in building the next great thing in my eyes, one of the next greatest things happening in Lightning. And the time to build that is you know, now, using some of the stuff that uh, I'm going to talk about today. One of the other big benefits is this thing. I'm calling it splice join. But the, the idea is you can combine transactions together in a splice. So one of the reasons splicing took a while uh, was that it's designed so that multiple splices can happen at one time. So this is for the idea being if you have two channels that you want to splice at the same time, those can be in one Bitcoin transaction on chain. If you have three, that can be in one Bitcoin transaction. If you have five, if you have 20, there's not really a limit other than the transaction size. But on top of that, you can also add other transactions. So there's no reason you couldn't be taking funds that you would normally put through some kind of coin join and then mix them with a bunch of splices that are going through at the same time. So it, the protocol was designed for the to make this to make this possible, and it is possible today. It's just quite complex. So um, <clears throat> I think I covered some of this. What are the goals of this? Right. So 
in general, joining transactions, I think, is, is better for the whole network. It, it does save on space, so we're more efficient with the block space. Obviously, it makes it harder for ch chain analysis type companies to track transactions, which is beneficial. Um, and it's just a kind of cleaner way to, to do everything. Um, which reminds me of the thing I want to mention, which is that uh, there's these things called pay joins, which I don't know if you've heard about them, but they're all, they've been hyped up a lot lately. And these are the ideas that when you go to pay a merchant on chain, the merchant can mix your transaction with other people's transactions at the point of, uh, point of purchase, which is awesome. Um, and I think one day we can get stuff like pay join merged in with splices. If I'm honest, I think every Bitcoin transaction, eventually we might get merged with splice transactions. Like, you could imagine a world where every block is just one huge transaction and it's just a huge uh, splice join. No, one can dream. So, okay, so these are some of the things that we can accomplish with splicing. Um, and the challenge being that they're all quite difficult to do. And this is kind of a bit of a, bit of sort of a summary of some of those things. I covered paying an on-chain address. Uh, adding funds. Um, you also might want to like move funds from one channel to another, which is a surprisingly useful thing that you might not realize. Like if you're running a high-powered lightning node and you're getting lots of traffic through one channel and you're getting no traffic through another channel, which is a really common occurrence, you might want to move the funds from the channel that's doing you no good over to the one that's doing you lots of routing and making lots of routing fees. So that's a useful thing. Um, and then some of the other things that we can enable are just, these are just more complex versions of the same thing. I have like three dead channels and two of them that are good. I want to move funds all at once into those. And you know, you can open multiple channels at once. You can splice many channels into one channel. All these sorts of things are things we want to do with splicing that is possible. Again, it's just rather complex to do. You have to be able to manage complex PSBT states, among other things. Um, and then one bonus category that could be accomplished is um, merging with pay joins, coin joins, train traffic. I kind of covered this. But uh, this would all be very exciting. Question being is how do we do it? Um, and the answer is, is splice script. It's this, it's this new language I've devised, as simple as possible, to just describe splices. And the goal of it is we can build we can build a tool that takes whatever complex splice you want to do, and it will solve the splice for you and do all of the complicated under the hood stuff so that you can get whatever you want done. And instead of saying having to manage a PSPT or 12 of them through 12 different channels, you can just give it one command, and this solver will just do all the hard work for you. All right. Um, doo -doo -doo. So the reason I kind of stumbled upon this is because I've been messing with splicing probably longer than maybe anyone. I guess probably because I wrote the first one. I have been. And I noticed really early on how difficult it is to manage these complex splices. So we're trying to make it simpler. And don't confuse simpler with doing less. The value of making it simpler is that people can do more with it. So all of those like, high vision goals earlier in the slides I'm talking about, I believe this is the path to make those things viable. Right? The, more, the easier you make it to do more complex things, the more complex things can be done. So that's the idea. All right, what is SpliceScript? It's, the idea is to make a really si as simple as possible syntax to do any complex splice that exists. Uh, this includes on-chain channels. So you could even write like a coin join in splice scripts, even though it's not really the main goal. But the point is to make it versatile enough to do it. And um, <coughs> the goal is to keep it as simple as possible, which is a challenge. Um, and, and also, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there are some ways you can shoot yourself in the foot doing complicated splices. Um, you, you can accidentally sign, sign someone else's uh, someone can in maliciously inject an input into your, into your splice 
that you sign giving them all of your funds. Like this is a danger that's out there. And one benefit of building a system like this is that the system can automatically stop those things. All right, I'm going to speed up a little bit here. All right, I'm going to go through a few examples just to kind of give you a visual sense of it. We're not going to go too deep. If you, uh, you know, if you're scared of these things, don't worry. Uh, this is an example of a very simple splice script that does a splice out. So here we have a shortened channel identifier, and we're saying 10,000 sats, take them out, and they'll go into your on-chain wallet. Here's a splice in example. We're taking from your wallet 10,000 sats, um, and then we're putting them into the channel with this identifier. So these are like the, the simple things you can do with splices. Obviously, the goal is to do complex things, but seeing the simple thing helps understand it. Uh, here, we're saying I want to splice funds out of a channel onto an on-chain address. Um, this, by the way, is actually one of Satoshi's old addresses. <laughs> but this is how you'd write that script. Um, and they get more complex from there. Like, here's moving funds. I want to take half the funds in these two top channels and move them to these bottom two channels. Um, this is kind of a taste of what it looks like. Uh, here's one where you say we're going to close three channels and put them into a new channel. So I have three dead channels, create a new one. Just kind of giving you a taste here. All right. Technical warning over. Um, so in summary, um, splicing is, is, is nearly done. And I'm, I'm working on now basically how we're going to use splicing. And splice script, I believe, is the, is the pinnacle step to making splicing give us all the promises that it's been giving us for offering for a long time. Um, yeah, and uh, so my approach is I'm trying to build this tool in the best way possible. I'm trying to do the hard work for all the corner cases, make it as clean and elegant as possible um, so that people can do more stuff with it. And I'm trying to build it <clears throat> in a way where the idea being it's a tool that is, is, is beyond any implementation. You know, it's, it can work on, it's working on Core Lightning now, but it can work on any implementation that follows the, the same RPC protocol. And the goal is if I make this really good, if I make a really good hammer and nail, then hopefully it'll encourage other people to build awesome equivalents of houses and stuff uh, with it. So I'm holding myself to that standard as I, as I design it. And uh, that's, that's my talk. Thanks for coming. All right.